couple of things that are new to, that are going to happen tonight. You've never seen before a lot of games. Uh, you're going to be challenged in, in, in God's Word. You're going to hear some songs you may have never heard, some that are going to be probably very familiar to you. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight. My, my, my greatest advice to you tonight about what you're going to see and do over the next hour or so is just to be open because some of you, we're going to call you up on stage. Uh, this is a family experience worship service. And so we've got some games and stuff that we're even going to do uh, uh, out here today, uh, tonight. And, and the way it's going to work is, is we don't want just your kids out here. We're going to take you with them, okay? And, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. We've got some prizes, kids. Uh, I know that we sprayed FX Live in, in, in a lot of yards. If we sprayed, if we sprayed FX Live in your yard and you're here tonight, we've got you in uh, in the pot for a draw, and we've got some really cool prizes we're going to give to that as well. So let's pray together, and then after we pray, uh, we're going to get to the first game, okay? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I'm so thankful for this night, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord, for these families that are here. Lord, for the, the boys, the girls, the parents, the grandparents, Lord, and everybody else that's coming here tonight just to, to worship you, Lord, to be challenged uh, by your word and to encourage these families that are here tonight. God, I just pray, Lord, that in everything we do, everything we say, our focus and, and our hearts would be upon you and that you'd be glorified in it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First game, Miss Ashley's coming. Hey guys, how's it going? Okay, so this game is called Gorilla Man Gun. Okay, who all has played rock, paper, scissors before? Oh, come on, everybody, I know. Okay, this is like the cool version of Gorilla Man Gun, or of rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you need to know three motions and one sound. So, Everybody show me your gorilla face. This is gorilla. Okay. Man, I don't see anybody with a, with a goatee. Here you go. Man, you're going to be stroking your goatee. This is a man. Come on, everybody. Everybody. Okay. And then gun is pretty obvious. Okay. And so we've got gorilla, we've got man, and we've got gun. Now I need to hear you say, whoop, whoop. Okay, I think we can handle it. You wanna throw us on some music? I need everybody to stand up. Find a partner. Find a partner and turn your backs to them. Okay. What's gonna happen? All right, here's the deal. Gorilla beats the man, okay? The man beats the gun, and the gun beats Gorilla, but if you tie, then you die, okay? So, let's get a little jiggy with it. Come on, we can do it. It's all right, it's all right. Okay, my youth, you guys know this. I need your help, ready? We're gonna practice, okay? When I get to four, Turn your back to your partner. Everybody needs a partner. Does anybody not have a partner? We got one person that doesn't have a partner. Who else does not have a partner? Raise your hand high if you do not have a partner. Anybody? Okay. You have a buy for this round. Congratulations. You're on to the next round, okay? So you got a buy. Oh, find a partner. Turn your back to your partner. Oh, Miss Vicky, where's your partner? Oh, okay, I didn't even see, well, she's like this tall. Okay, so, my youth that knows this song, I need your help, okay? We got a little tune to go with it, okay? So we're gonna do, the first round is gonna be a practice round. So if you tie or if you lose, you're not gonna sit down this round, it's gonna be practice, okay? So here we go. Here we go. Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats gorilla, if you tie, you die. Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats gorilla, if you tie, you die. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Turn around. Okay. So that was a practice round, so 
everybody's still in. But just remember, Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats Gorilla, and if you tie, you're both out, okay? So here we go, this is for real, this is the real deal. We ready? Here we go. Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats Gorilla, if you tie, you die. Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats Gorilla, if you tie, you die. One. Two. One. Did you win? Okay, you're gonna be go back there with her. We got one in the back. Miss Vicky and the lovely lady in the purple. Is there anybody else that needs a partner? Oh, we still have one that does everybody have a partner? All right. Ready? Here we go. Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats Gorilla, if you tie, you die. Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats Gorilla, if you tie, you die. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Oh! I need anybody that won to come to the front. pick another one, okay? You, you can't tie in this one. All right, here we go. And Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats Gorilla, if you tie, you die. Gorilla beats the man, the man beats the gun, the gun beats Gorilla, if you tie, you die. One, two, one.
How are you guys doing tonight? Doing good? Uh, it's cool to see like a bunch of different faces like from the, um, not the old people, no way, not old people, the senior citizens, the season to like the, uh, the young kids. Uh, that's cool for, um, I guess for all of us to be here, um, just worshiping God's name. Um, who's excited to worship tonight? Anybody? Yeah? All right, so we want to start off with a song called Happy Day, and um, I believe that Miss Lauren McMahon uh, kind of has like some hand motions for him. So if y'all like to stand up, that'd be awesome. And uh, let's just get excited to worship Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Um, I would like to kind of introduce us. Um, we are from Calvary of Camden. Uh, we are all in high school or junior high. Little the youngins around me. Um, so um, on the far left, we have Kyle Jones. He plays electric. Um, he has his doctors in electric guitar, and he's only seven years old. So... We like to, we, we're pretty proud of him. Um, and also right here is uh, Lauren McMahon. She's our vocalist slash uh, hand motion sign language lady. Yeah. She's pretty good at it. Um, to our right, we have um, Abby Griffin on the keyboard. She is, all three of these guys are in the same grade. They're in, are you on the third grade yet? Or? Oh, yeah. Eighth, eighth, my bad, sorry. 
And then back here, he actually invented percussion. He, he, he's the father of, of drumming all from day one. His name's Jared Steed, and uh, he's in ninth grade. And my name is Brent, Brett James, and I'm a junior, and we're all from Harmony Grove. And uh, we're knee high. And so uh, we're really excited to be playing for y'all tonight. And um, just want God to touch e each and every one of y'all's lives tonight. And uh, just let G God have all the glory. Um, I want to introduce y'all to maybe a new song. Um, it's called Rise and Sing. Have you ever heard of it? Anybody? Anybody? No? Yeah. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to start out, and I'm going um, to go, whoa. So you guys are just going to follow her. So I'm going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, that was perfect. Just, just a little bit too quiet. So a little bit louder? A little bit louder? Cool? OK. Whoa, 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 whoa.
Sin has lost its power, death has lost its sting. From the grave you've risen, victorious into marvelous light. I'm running out of darkness, out of shame. Through the cross you are the truth, you are the light, you are the Because you are the truth, you are the light, you are the way. My dead heart. My dear heart. its power, death has lost its sleep, from the grave you risen, victorious into marvelous light, I'm running out of darkness, out of shame, through the cross you are the truth, you are the life, you are the way. Darkness out of shame. Through the cross, you are the truth. You are the light. You are the. Lift my hands. Lift my hands and spin around. See the light that I found. Oh, the marvelous light. The marvelous light. Yeah. Lift my hands and spin around. See the light that I found on the modern side, modern side, yeah. Into modern side, I'm running out of darkness, out of shame. Through the cross, you are the truth, you are the light. You wake up. Into modern side, I'm running out of darkness, out. Through the cross you are the truth, you are the light, you are the way. Thank you guys. Okay, you, may, you can be seated. What we're going to do is we got, we've got another game for you. Uh, and then the band's going to come up and, and sing again. And uh, this is, a, this is a, a game that's going to push you a little bit, okay? So you're just going to have to get tough here, okay? We, we're going to get six different uh, pairs. And, and the way the pairs are going to work is, 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 is we want you to be we're hoping we can get everybody that's up here that's on, in the pairs that are related, okay? Uh, and so this is, this is what we're going to do. Uh, first of all, is anybody in here allergic to sugar? That's, that's the first question. If you're allergic to sugar, you cannot participate in this game, okay? You have to be completely okay with sugar, okay? Now, okay, so all the diabetics need not apply. So this is what we need. The first thing we need is we're going to get uh, Wit and, and my wife are going to, uh, if y'all will stand, so go right there. Go ahead, Whit and, and Mindy together. And then uh, I'm thinking uh, Miranda and Eddie Bryan, if y'all would go, come together. 
Uh, come on, Miranda. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Go on, dear. Come on, dear. Uh, and then we also need uh, we need Russ Walker and Trey. That's one, two, three. We're going to get Jacob Orr and Taylor. There you are, dear. Come on, dear. Whitney McGugan and Jason McGugan. Am I, am I list, Am I one more? How about Aubrey and Alana? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Now, this is how this game works. You'll notice that on stage with me, the younger of the, of the, of the pairs are on stage with me. The older of the pairs are, y'all can sit down, uh, are on, on, on chairs in front of them. This is what's it's going to happen. Uh, there are, we've got donuts that are on a orange string. And the person that and each one of these kids is going to be holding that, that donut, and they're going to hold it over their partner's face. Okay? Are you with me? Now, they're going to eat that donut, but they can't touch the donut with their hands. Okay? In fact, what's going to need to happen is, is you're going to, parents and older siblings, parents and older, older siblings, we want you to put your hands under your legs. Hands under legs. Okay? Okay, I need everybody's attention, everybody's attention. I, I feel like we should tell you this. I feel like you need to know this. When we went to the place to get the donuts, so we said, we want some donuts, and they said, well, these are fresh, brand new, and we said, we don't want those. We want the sorriest donuts you've got. We want the donuts that were a day old two or three days ago. We want the donuts that you got to kind of scratch the cockroaches off. Those are the donuts we want. And so that's what we got. And so I'm excited about that, and I know that y'all are too, to watch this. Now, the good news is, is we have prizes for the first one that can eat the entire donut, or in one minute, is that what we're saying? One minute, you got one minute. The person that's eating the, the donut first, or the most in one minute, we've got a big old prize for you, okay? Now, is everybody feeling good about this, okay? Now, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. For the young ones, you can hold the donut where you, where you want it to be right now. Get it where you want it. Are you feeling good? Okay. For those of you watching, we've got a timer right on the screen, okay? Are you ready? On your mark, get set, go. You're doing great. Stay with it, Russ. I think it's a tie right now between Alana and Russ. It's going well. I think Alana's got it figured out. Twenty-five seconds. Twenty-five seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. <laughs> okay, everybody stop. Now let's look at the donuts. Miss Katie, if you will look at the donuts and see who has won. We're going to let her make the decision. There's a little bit right there. We might have to do this again. <laughs> Eddie and Miranda have won by a, a little bit. We got a prize for them. What, what is that prize? Two gift cards, one to Subway, one to Burger King. Awesome. Okay. Thank y'all. If you need a drink of water, go get one. You need to wash your hands. Please do that.
We've got one more game after this in a little bit. No, you guys are right. We've got one more game we're going to do tonight and another draw. And let me, let me tell you about, about this, this, uh, this praise and worship band that came, that's here with us tonight. Nehi is with us tonight. And the reason, well, how we found them is through two different avenues. Uh, Katie uh, is, is very good friends with the children's minister at Calvary, and that's kind of how that happened. But then also, uh, we saw your thing at this, in the state paper. Uh, in the state, in the, in the, the Arkansas Baptist State Convention comes out with a paper about every two weeks. And one of the things that they have in it is a thing a few weeks ago or a, a few months ago that had a list of all these evangelists and musicians and stuff like that. And we were looking for something just for tonight. And uh, we saw you guys and we said, this is what we need. And so uh, that's kind of how it worked. God just kind of put that together. So they're going to come and lead us in another time of worship. You guys come right now. All right, that was a pretty fun game. I, I kind of wish I could have been a part of that. I think I could ate the donut, but uh, there were a few. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is a newer song that we're gonna do. Um, actually, we got two newer songs um, that you guys may not be familiar with. Has anybody ever heard of Passion? Um, better no. Okay, so Passion is a place that's where college kids go and um, just praise God for what three days, I guess, and. Uh, as y'all know, we're not in college, so we can't go. We're all too young to go. But um, we love listening to the Passion album. There's one song. It's called The Only One. And uh, we're going to do that one tonight. Um, and just to get y'all familiar with the song, it goes a little bit like, In my life, Jesus, more of you. Jesus, you are the one. That's going to be kind of the course to it, and I uh, hope you guys sing along. So if you all want to stand up, that'd be cool. I don't believe every heart needs a healer. Someone to walk through the fire. All I need, I have found. Everyone's been looking for a savior. When it feels like the world's going on. See in my life, Jesus, more of you, Jesus, you are the word, you are the word in everything, Jesus, my heart says, Jesus, you are the word, you are the word. Every day there's a home to remember. Yesterday's been washed in the water. All I need, I have found in my life. Jesus, more of you. Jesus, you are the word. You are the word in everything. Jesus. Jesus, you are the one, you are the only. 
God, thank you for this opportunity to worship you tonight. Lord, I pray that with everything we do, God, that we always bring glory to you, God. And Lord, as I pray the Spirit comes up, that we'd open our hearts, open our minds. And give our undivided attention, not, not to the speaker, not because of the speaker, but to you, God. All for you, God. Lord, I just thank you for saving my sins, God. Lord, how you picked me up from nothing, God. Lord, without you, I'm nothing. Uh, thank you for your great power and glory. And uh, Lord, just let us show love to everyone we come in contact with, Lord. Let us love others, God. powerful holy name God Amen okay if I use one of these stands? All right. Hey, guys. I am so glad to be with you tonight. 
Um, I just love what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish, and um, just just give you guys all sorts of credit for uh, for what you're doing here. I, I love the family. When Emmanuel called me and asked me to come about a year and a half ago uh, to two years ago, I told them that if I was coming, I wanted to come with the uh, the title of student and family minister. And the reason is, is there's a, a great movement going on in our churches that emphasizes the family because we have somehow gotten away from the whole concept of family worship and what it means to be a family together. And so um, we're, we're trying to bring that back to life and, at Emmanuel, and, and I know that you guys, by having things like this, are trying to do that also. I've been married for 17 years. I have a 15-year-old son, a 12-year-old son, and a nine-year little girl. And so family's big to us. It's important because uh, we're always on the run, and uh, sometimes we're together, sometimes we're not. And so when we come to church, we want to kind of know what each other is doing and sort of worship together as a, a family. I told some folks that I was coming out here and uh, found out that we have a lot of ties together. Uh, Manual Baptist and Three Creeks found out that uh, uh, that Keith Davidson's family is out here. I don't remember the names of, of her family, and found out that uh, Jerry Paul's wife Debbie, her family is out here, and uh, they all spoke really well of you guys. As a matter of fact, uh, one of our staff members said, I won't tell you who because I don't want you to recruit her, but uh, said that if I wasn't at Emmanuel. Out of all the churches in the area, this is where I would go. So Three Creeks has a great reputation. You guys are well loved. Um, I, I just love the fact that uh, we can be here together. Every church has an identity. Have you ever thought about this? The fact that some churches are known uh, for their student ministry. Man, they've got a kick in student ministry. They've got a great thing going on over there. And some churches are known for their children's ministry. And some churches are known for their senior adult ministry. And some are known for their fellowship and some are known for their teaching and, and how well they they do education every church has sort of an identity it's really I, I guess that's really okay because it draws different folks to what they feel passionate about but wouldn't it be great to be known as a family church wouldn't that be phenomenal to have that reputation you guys have the opportunity in South Arkansas to sort of step out and become known and, and have that identity because a lot of our churches have sort of lost that along the way, a place where family is important. We know that it's important, right? Because before the nations were created, before governments were made, before um, any other institution that you can think of, we see where God created family first. Family came before even the church. And so family has always been extremely important to the heart of God. Matter of fact, we can begin to see that heart when we look into um, a verse, and well, sort of a passage of scripture in the Old Testament. And you, you guys are familiar with this passage. You know what it says, but I want to say it to you again. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, Verses 4 through 9. Let me set up what's going on and so you can hear the heart of God in this passage. The nation of Israel has been in the wilderness for 40 years. We know the story, right? Moses went before Pharaoh and he said to Pharaoh, let my people go. Okay? And so finally they were able to go and then they made some mistakes and they were in the wilderness for 40 years but they finally get to the promised land, the, the, the place where God had promised them abundance. And as they make their way to the Jordan River on the edge of that promised land, Moses stands in front of the people. And this is sort of his, his last address to them. This is what he wants them to know before they go over because he's not able to go. And he stands before the people. And I can just imagine this scene as Moses is on the edge of the banks of the Jordan. And he looks around at this sea of people that are around him, and he begins to say these words. Listen to his heart when he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I'm commanding to you today in your heart. Recite them, listen, to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're away, when you lie down, when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your forehead. Fix them on the doorpost of your home. Write them on those doorposts. And that begins the process of us seeing that God has family first, our family life. He wants us to write on the hearts of our kids. When we begin to understand the importance of family, then we can sort of see how the marriage of family and church affects the, the passing down of faith through the generations. Family and church then have to work together. But family comes first. And really that just kind of makes sense. On average, parents get to spend about 3,000 hours a year with their children. Do you know how much on average the church gets the children? About 40 hours a year. And some of the kids are like, no, I'm way above the average on that one. My, my family's always in church. But that's on average what it is. If that's the case, then why are we relying so much on the church to build up the next generation in faith? If, they spend, if the family spends so much more time together, how can we bring in the family, marry this church and family concept together so that true discipleship is going on? See, discipleship occurs in the home first. Now, I want to say just a quick word to some of the senior adults that are in this room. I, I want to thank you personally. I was standing at the back a little while ago, and I just want to thank you guys for being here and being a part of this. Because I, I know, I, believe me, I've worked in church for a long time. I know some of this is different. Some of this is a little bit out of your comfort zone. Some of you would maybe like for it to be a, a little bit like the days gone by. But you are here and you are willing to do whatever it takes to reach these little ones that are up here. And I, I applaud that. I love that. I thank you for that. I thank you for your heart and your passion to see what Moses said on the banks of the Jordan before entering the promised land, that that faith would be passed down from generation to generation. Now, here's where we've kind of messed this up. I need uh, three volunteers. I think, I think someone has probably fixed those volunteers ahead of time for me. You got three for me? Okay. I want to show you guys how we've done this. I just need three volunteers to come up front, the three that you all selected for me, possibly. She, you just selected right now? Wow. You don't get a prize. I don't have any prize. Okay. What's your name? Don, Brock, and Miss Laverne. Thank you. Just stand just right up here, and if you want to face them, that's great. Um, they're lovely people. Um, I want to show you guys kind of some models that we have presented in the church over the years, okay? The first one I'm going to call, well, it's a harsh word, but I'm going to call family segregated ministry. And you tell me if this kind of sounds familiar. What we've done, Miss Laverne, would you please take about 10 steps over there? And Brock, would you take about 10 steps over there? Thank you. What we've done in church for the last probably 40 years, um, 40, 50 years, is called family segregated ministry. And we've decided that Miss Laverne needs her own group, and they're going to get together and meet as senior adults because they all like each other and, and, and have common interests. They love to talk about um, uh, gardening and other things, and so they're, they're going to meet together when they come to church. And what we've said to Brock is, you're weird. And so we're going to put you way over here <laughs> where we really don't have to deal with you, Brock. <laughs> and, 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 and Don, is it Don? Don, uh, you're just kind of, yeah, you're just right. That's what you are. That's exactly what I was going to say. 
And so we've left Don to kind of deal with his own peer groups. And, and so what they do is, and what we do as churches, is we say, okay, we're going to take Sunday school, and we're going to divide everybody up according to their age. And we're going to take Wednesday nights, and we're going to divide everybody up according to their age. And, and we're going to take small groups and, and, and parenting classes, and we're going to divide everybody up. And, and what we'll do is we'll add events to the church calendar where every once in a blue moon maybe we'll get these groups together maybe we'll have a fish fry or maybe we'll do a special emphasis and we'll bring these these groups together if you open up in this kind of ministry you open up our bulletins and what you see is a menu you, you come to Emmanuel and if you all go back home and tell them some of the things that I said tonight I'll tell them that yeah I said it um, what, what you do is, and our bulletin is like this, you open it up and it's a menu. And basically everybody comes with their own interests, with their own likes, with who they want to hang out with, and they select off of the menu where to go and where to be plugged in. And that's what we call family segregated church. Now, the opposite of that, we're going to call family integrated church. And it's the exact opposite. So, Miss Laverne, you're not having to move very much. If you'll come over here, and I want you to to face in to him, shoulders. Come here, Brock. Come here. And you're going to face in, shoulder to shoulder, and kind of close off that circle, Brock. Kind of close it up right there. Now, y'all face each other. I hope you've had a breath, man. Um, <laughs> this is family integrated. Now, in this form of ministry, and, and believe me, there are actually churches that do this. They close off the family. It's all about the family. Brock is not allowed to go really hang out with anybody that he likes. He's not allowed to go hang out with his friends. Uh, Laverne, and, and, and the, the family becomes the central unit of the church. It's almost Amish style, and I love the Amish people, but, but it, it's kind of kind of closed off because if you'll notice their backs are to you guys and so there's very little room for interaction so as much as the family segregated is a it just doesn't look right to me there's a little bit of this that doesn't look right to me either because Brock now is expected to learn on the same level as Miss Laverne and it's very clear that Miss Laverne is much wiser than Mr. Brock, okay? <laughs> so this doesn't kind of look right. So we've got family segregated, we've got family integrated. But there's one last form of doing ministry in the church that is on its way to becoming extremely popular. And I bless God for it, because we need to get there, and we need to get there in a hurry. Let's call it family equipping. So, Miss Laverne, I, do you know Don? Okay. Is he okay? Is he an okay fella? This is the okay group? Well, you've kind of lessened your standards to just being okay now. Um, if you will take his hand, and Brock, if you'll take his, do you know Don? Okay. All right. Just a little bit? All right. If you'll take his hand. Let's call this family equipping and what I mean by that is we're generating the the activities and the ministries of our church so that the family knows what's going on when when Brock goes off to Sunday school Don knows what's going on in Brock's Sunday school there it's all sort of coordinated to where Don and Laverne are being equipped and Brock and so that they can have opportunities to talk and work through the matters of faith together when we have different events and activities in the church we, we we do them in a way to where the family is at the center of it we don't necessarily want to close Brock off from his friend groups we don't want to close Laverne off or Don but we want them to be able to take what's happening at church to the home because that's the way God intended it from the very beginning this is family equipping this churches that grab onto this idea 
we champion the family. We understand the parents' role, the grandparents' role in raising up the next generation. So we create times of serving together. We create opportunities to do missions together. We create, like tonight, the opportunity to worship together. And all of us have to make sacrifices in order for this to happen, in order for it to work. It takes a new mindset for church. Because, y'all, we've been too long segregating, and it's not working anymore. All right? Give these guys a hand. You all can have a seat. Good job. What about, because some of you think, well, okay, I understand about the family. But some of you may walk in here tonight, and you're like, but I'm a single adult. But where do I fit into that? I don't have any family close by that's involved. Or I'm a single mom. This kind of makes me feel awkward. Or maybe I'm a widow or a widower. Where do I fit into that sort of scheme if it's all about the family? Well, what we do then in those situations is we understand that. And we let the widowed senior adults adopt a family and get involved in their lives. We make connections. We let families adopt a single adult or if we have students that are from not from are, are from, they're from families that are not coming to church we adopt them into our families we recognize these needs and we begin to come together as a church family because we're all children of God that's the way he intended church to be anyway so there are ways to handle that but what does this do in our philosophy it allows us to have faith talks together. It allows us to have faith walks together. In other words, families are at home talking about the faith, talking about what God's doing, walking through life, what God is, in certain circumstances, what God is doing. It allows us to progress through the different stages of life and emphasize the family's role at each stage along the way. What are some of those stages? Some of them are very natural. Uh, when you talk about salvation or when you talk about baptism, that's a stage where we can celebrate family. When you talk about baby dedication, that's a stage we can celebrate family. When you talk about marriage, that's a stage. When you talk about students who are beginning to develop some peach fuzz on their, their lips, that's a great stage to emphasize family and talk about adolescence and the the, the next step into manhood or into womanhood, all of those are great opportunities for faith talks and faith walks. Why are parents not involved, y'all? I mean, I've been doing student ministry for almost 15 years now. Why are parents not involved in their progress? And a lot of it's my fault because I've cut them out of it because I've become the center of the the growing up of faith in students' lives. In 2008, there was a family needs survey that was done. They took 40,000 Christian parents, and they said, tell us about what happens in your home. And they began to ask some questions. And the results were, they're scary. What they found is that out of 40,000 Christian parents, 50% of them said that their families never had a devotional time. 40% of them said their families had never prayed together. 25% said that, uh, I'm sorry, 25% had said that they had never prayed with their children. 40% said that they never, ever discussed spiritual matters at home. So I, I'm telling you that I took that to heart, and especially as a minister. So now when we get in the car on our way to school, I ask my kids, I say, what's going on in your lives? And before we hit the school doors, we have a word of prayer in our cars. I, I keep my eyes open while I'm driving, so we're good. I don't know what they do. But we have those times of prayer together. We've got to do that where we're intentional. Here's the amazing statistic. 300% better chance for kids, for these little ones right here, to stay in church if they're having faith conversations prayer time, devotional time at home. 300% better chance. Meanwhile, on the flip side of that, right now today in America, students 
after they graduate high school and graduate the youth ministry of the church, depending on the statistic that you take, somewhere between 60 to 80 percent are leaving the church for good, never to come back. We're doing something wrong. We attract them, we get them in, we give them a great time, but then they get to be young adults, and it never really meant anything to them. I, I saw a commercial two years ago during a University of Arkansas game. I graduated from the U of A, and so I'm a, I'm a big Hog fan, and, and uh, I saw this commercial come on TV, and I laughed so hard when I saw it because it has this this senior walk that they do at the U of A, and maybe you've seen this, where the, the names of the graduates are etched into the concrete there at the university. And they were promoting that in the middle of a football game, and so they showed this commercial, and it had this sculptor-looking guy, had one of these funny hats, and he was taking a chisel and a hammer, and he was very carefully writing every name into the concrete. Kind of giving that personal touch to it, like, like every person was brought up in a very personal way. And I laugh because I've seen them do that. They take this enormous stencil, they lay it out on a piece of concrete, and they're sandblasters. There's 20 guys involved in this process, and they're just sandblasting through those names. They don't even read them. That's exactly what we've turned our churches into. Let's put a stencil on our kids. Let's mass produce, sandblast our way through. When Deuteronomy 6 says, write it on their hearts. We're supposed to take that chiseled approach, and the family comes first in that. Now, here's the perception of youth and children's ministry. A youth minister is supposed to be some guy with a goatee and a guitar, and he's supposed to have spam and a blender. And it's supposed to be crazy games and things like that. And I've, I've seen Brandon tonight uh, for the first time, and he went way beyond the goatee. That is one hairy man. <laughs> but we, we bring in these students, and we come to Jesus camps, and we have these spiritual highs. And student ministry is all about going from one spiritual high to the next spiritual high. And please, please, Brandon, be my son's best friend or be my daughter's best friend because they will not talk to me at home. <laughs> I know because I have a 15-year-old. They're like that. And so I need for you to be their best friend. And here's our perce perception of children's ministry for Miss Katie. Miss Katie, I need you to get my children saved so that I feel good about them because they're about to turn 13 and I'm not going to feel good about them anymore. And I don't want them to be saved. And so, Miss Katie, will you kind of give this Nickelodeon type atmosphere to the church because that's going to bring in a lot of kids and and on Wednesday nights let's send them to Awana I know this kind of hurts y'all but it's it's the way we've been doing it let's send them to the Awanas and let's give them 15 minutes in a Bible handbook time and say you know what that's good enough that 15 minutes in God's word through the week ah, that's good that's all right and it makes us feel better about ourselves and what we're doing Am, am I right about that? Is that what we do? That's, that's what we do. And it's like changing the course of this massive ocean liner because that's the way we've been doing it for years and years and years. Billy Graham came out of the Youth for Christ movement, which was a parachurch movement. It was, it was different from from what was going on in the church and they were attracting a lot of students so a lot of churches began to say you know what that's a pretty good idea that's pretty cool let's start having youth groups in our church and so it was a really great idea but now it's almost like is this really effective anymore are we really creating disciples like they need to be and are we still involving our families or have we cut them out of the picture I look forward to a movement where the home is at the center of the church again. There was a, another survey that was done of 1,200 adults, and y'all, this just kills me. Christian adults, and they said, tell us your definition of successful parenting. 
25% said that their s- definition of success is finding success in life. Another 25% said good values. 22% said being a good person. 17% said graduating from college. 15% said living independently out of my house. 9%, 9% of Christian adults said my definition of successful parenting is having faith in God. It should have been at the top of the list. The number one reason that students today are leaving the church as soon as they become young adults is that they have been placed in a church environment where it's all about faith and then they go home for the other 165 hours of the week and we don't talk about the faith. We don't do anything about the faith because churches have sort of taken that over. It's, it's, it's our job to do that. So prayer, Bible study, faith talk is something you do at church. That's too segmented. We need to get to something that has the family at the center again. Okay? I'm going to close by saying this just to the kids. Uh, We're in the middle of baseball season, kiddos. How many of you play baseball? How many of you kids? Yeah, a bunch of you. I've got one in baseball and one in softball. And watching nine, I love you nine-year-old girls, but watching nine-year-old softball When you're new to uh, live pitch, oh my goodness, it'll about make you pull your hair out, and I don't have that much to pull out anymore. But I I, kind of like to to look for baseballs. When you go out to a baseball park, you know, and and I don't know about your baseball park, but some baseball parks are a little bit out of the way. They're kind of out where there's not much around, and so you'll, you'll find some high grass and some trees, and practice will be going on, or or maybe a game, or maybe I'm in between games, and I'll just kind of look around, because normally I can find some baseballs, especially if I go to the foul side. You know what a foul ball is, where they they hit it off way to the left or hit it off way to the right? Normally I can find one out there, and this is what it looks like. Usually these balls are forgotten. No one really cares about them because they were just a foul ball, and foul balls are not just a big deal and so they're left out by themselves and they're kind of forgotten and the the weather just kind of wears them down just kind of all alone by themselves but what's the ball that everybody goes after the home run everybody wants a home run ball you don't lose a home run ball if a ball goes for a home run you can see about 50 kids take off and start running for that sucker because everybody wants the home run ball and usually you can see some dads doing that too if their kid was the one that hit it this is a home run ball it wasn't gone for maybe 30 seconds most aren't because everybody values a home run ball can I tell you something about your church kiddos Three Creeks Baptist Church thinks you're a home run ball they're willing even by tonight what they're doing tonight they're willing to do whatever it takes to go after you and to make sure that you stay in the best condition the best shape that you can stay in because you're a home run ball they value they love you you're that special at three creeks baptist church and so we're willing aren't we aren't we willing in our churches to do whatever it takes. If we need to change some things, if statistics say we're losing them, let's do whatever it takes to get them back. They're that valuable. Amen? Amen. So what you're going to do over these next few months into this next year, concentrating on the family, focusing on the family, I'm telling you, I applaud it. It's what everybody in ministry that's coming up right now is thinking about and trying to do you all set the pace you all show the way there'll be a lot of people that are going to follow you okay
Love you guys. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm thinking Brother James is coming back up and is going to close us out. Let me give a challenge to you guys. We're going to do one more game in just a second and draw for something else. But, but everything that Warren's told you tonight is where we're going. Uh, we've been talking a lot in the last several months about something that's coming up, something that's on, it's, it's, it's the change is, is slowly coming to be. And we are doing that. Family ministry is something that we're not just talking about. It's something that we're doing. Even tonight, it's just a little bit of a taste of, of, of a, new, a new time in Three Creeks. Uh, where family is going to be a focus in what we do. Uh, we sense that this is what God's going to do. The way This started all the way back in October, and God put something on Katie's mind, and, and she put a book in my head and said, you need to read this book. She met this guy, and I, I read the book. And, and right then, I've been praying. I said, Lord, I, I feel like we are, we are becoming stagnant. And I don't like being stagnant. I want to do something. I want to be doing things. I want our young people to be excited and our families to be excited about what God's doing. And God used that to just light a fire under us. And so for the last several, four, uh, I guess the last four months, almost five months, we've been 100% in it. And, and truthfully, for those of you that aren't really into the, uh, knowing the inner workings of the ministry staff with Brandon and Katie and I, we're already functioning that way. We've been functioning that way for the last six weeks in this family ministry uh, model. But in the kickoff date, the, the focus is September. Uh, and we're going to go and give you a, a lot of information over the next two and a half months, and then September we're going to kick this off. The children's department is already starting to move that direction, and the youth are too, taking some new curriculum and some new directions and things like that. It's going to be exciting. And my challenge to you is, is number one, be open to it, because it's going to push you some. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to push the boundaries of what you would think would be normal. It's going to push it a little bit. And so I want you to just be praying about it and, and be open to what maybe God is doing here. Second thing is, especially for your parents, is, is see how God is doing this, and I'm hoping you're going to be excited about it and, and want to be a part of this because this is about your children. And I'm not talking just about my 3-year-old. I'm talking about your 18-year-old, some of you youth parents, because Brandon, we've already just now, in the last two months, have expanded his responsibility. And now he's not just youth, but he's going college as well because we see where we're beginning to miss him. And so we're plugging them in. And so Brandon now is gonna, not just doing student ministry, he's doing collegiate ministry and trying to bring them in. We're changing Sunday school. We're doing a lot of different things. So be praying about it. Be open to it. Be excited about it. Uh, I'm so thankful that y'all are here tonight. I'm so thankful for the, for the guys from, from Camden coming. Y'all sang my, my daughter's favorite song, God's Not Dead. If you've not heard her sing it, go to our Faith by Facebook page, and you can see her singing God's Not Dead. She loves it and that much. And so she, she was really excited when y'all sang that song tonight. Katie's coming with one more game, and then we'll do a few more things. It's a great game. Okay, we have one more game, and I need the Dugan family. <laughs> and the Holmes family to come up. Yeah, parents and kids. Nick's going to love this game. <laughs> yes. Um, Kent, you and Nick sit in the chair for us. This is a messy game, and this is why we chose to play this one last. And so we have a little shaving cream. And some cheese balls. There's two, uh, Ashley, there's two um, trash bags right there. Okay. What they're going to do is Lisa and Ashley are going to take this shaving cream and put it on their face. On Nick's face. And <laughs> Ashley was getting worried. She thought she was going to have it on her face. <laughs> they're going to put it on their face like a beard. And what our boys are going to do are going to get to take these cheese balls and you're going to have one minute to see how many you can throw and get stick, stuck to the shaving cream. <laughs> Nick ought to love this. This is one of the games that Nick got the um, students to play at the after prom party. So he didn't get to join in, so we thought he should get to join in this time. Okay, if y'all want to go ahead, y'all can go ahead and... Oh, you, did you give them the trash, ba the trash bags? We're going to let them at least cover up with the trash bags so they don't get shaving cream all over them. We don't want to ruin their clothes. <laughs> Put them a trash bag on. 
put it over your neck. Okay, as soon as y'all get that done, if you want to put a little shaving cream, make them a little beard. Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Ashley and um, Lisa are going to do that. <laughs> okay. Boys, y'all come right here to the middle, however much you think he needs. Okay, y'all wait just a minute. Okay. Lisa, you're going to have to have more than that. <laughs> okay, boys, y'all come over here. Okay, Lisa and Ashley, we're going to get y'all to help hand the cheese balls to the boys. And then what, when, when he starts that timer, I'm gonna, we're going to say go, and they're going to start throwing them from right here to try to stick to their face. Okay, are y'all ready? Um, grab Ashley a paper towel uh, right real quick so she can help with cheese balls. <laughs> okay, are we ready? And as many as you can get to stick from right here in one minute. Are you ready? Go. Oh, okay. Go, on, boys. Stop right there. Don't shake. <laughs> Don't shake. <laughs> okay, Lisa and Ashley, y'all help us count. One more thing that we're going to give away. It's not a game. It's just a drawing. And what it is is uh, this week, those of you from Camden that don't know this, we've been promoting this week, and what we did was we went to every, I think just about every home, that uh, family that, uh, that's in our church, whether it's a children or a youth. We went to their home. We had a template made. This says FX Live, and it's uh, four by six feet. We laid it down in their front yard, and we took that orange fluorescent spray paint like they use for marking things up, and we sprayed it all in their yard, Okay. And uh, we didn't ask permission. We just did it, okay? And uh, and and said, you know, sorry. And we did. And but it went great. And and what we did was, is we told every person that did it that if you will, if you'll take a picture of it, post it to Facebook, we'll put your name in a drawing. And then you have to be here tonight. And so for everybody that did that, we've got your name in a uh, in a container over here, and we're going to draw your name. Hopefully, maybe somebody in here tonight their name and for the person that gets drawn you get a cool prize does that sound cool what do we have we've got a cool a lot of a bucket full of stuff candy and popcorn and and a really cool game 
And so that's what we're going to do. Jacob Harris, why don't you come forward here now since you're standing up. Come on down. You get to draw. You get to draw. Because my name's in there too. But yours is too. Hope I win. Okay. Here we go. No pressure. Make sure you get mine. Mine's the cold one. The cold one. Go ahead. Yeah. Tyler Cunningham, Jason, you win, bud. Congratulations. I sprayed that yard. I sprayed that yard. Okay. I hope y'all had a great time tonight. This is something that we, we, this is the first time we've ever done this. We don't, we've never even seen a church do this. We'd heard of churches that do this, but we've never seen one. So we didn't help know exactly what we were doing tonight. Uh, but we had just a great time, and I'm hoping that each one of you did too. And you're going to come back. We're going to do this again. Every time we do it, it's going to be in a different spot with a different thing. We're going to do it again in June is when we're going to do it again. And we'll put the dates and stuff on, the, uh, on Facebook, and we'll put it on the bulletin and stuff probably starting next week, okay? It's going to be a lot of fun. We, we promoted it in a really neat way this time, sprayed it in the yards. We're going to promote it in a different way next time, and you're really going to like it, guys. I think you will. And so, uh, But you'll see more of that in the coming weeks, okay? Is there, did I forget? Oh, yes. Next Sunday is uh, the first Sunday in May, and there's a youth fundraiser for camp. It's going to be right after church. It's going to be barbecue sandwiches. Uh, what's with those barbecue sandwiches, Brandon? Is that the potato salad with the mustard or the potato salad with the mayonnaise? Yeah. Both? You know, some of them are really yellow, and some of them are not so yellow. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay. It's going to be potato salad and, and beans, and it's going to be a lot of good food right after church. It's just like we talked about we've done in the past. If you need to just get a to-go box, you can do that too. Make sure before you leave tonight, you find these, 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 these guys from Camden that came and, uh, and find Warren and just give them, uh, just give them, a big old, give them each a big old hug and say thanks for coming and being a part of what God did here tonight here at Three Creeks. We're so thankful for each one of them. Why don't you stand to your feet and we're going to close with a word of prayer and then after that we will be done. We want you to have a great week. Don't forget Wednesday night is the Awana closing ceremonies. It's going to be in our sanctuary. It's going to be going on instead of just about everything. So be thinking about that and be aware of that too, okay? Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we are thankful for this night, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, that your, your spirit is here with us, Lord, for these young people that have come and led us in a time of worship. God, just truly great. Lord, just to Lord, just to hear different voices, Lord, singing praise and worship to you. God, I just ask you, Lord, you, you would just continue to bless their ministry. God, we thank you for Warren coming tonight, Lord, sharing, uh, Lord, a, a message, Lord, from your heart, Lord, uh, Lord, that might just speak to ours. Uh, Lord, we want to serve you. Lord, we want to show these, uh, this community, Lord, that family is something that we want to promote. It's something that we know is important. Lord, it's not just because we think so, but because your word says so. God, I just pray tonight that you give each one of us opportunities this week to share your your. your your word with others, Lord, that we would be a, a witness for you, Lord, in many different places. God, we just praise you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night.